Greetings fellow disciples of Wendy, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld The First Wendigo, episode 162, starting to call. So at the start of the stream, uh, I would like to pull you guys about what Wendy's priority will be. So I'm just gonna keep the ship running and have you guys vote. Uh, so we've got one, capture additional prisoners. So in order to capture additional prisoners, we would likely be looking for dirt moles, but I guess we could also go for impids. Um, but if we went for dirt moles, the idea would be to attack Inlor, uh, or I've been calling them Inlor, but I'll call them Inlor for sake of continuity, attacking Inlor settlements, and then if they don't have dirt moles in their settlement, just like leaving and coming back at a later date, because anytime you attack a new settlement, it reshuffles who defends it. Uh, so trying to capture dirt moles off of Inlor or capturing one more impid, because eventually it would be really nice to have a completely full prison of um, the 42 spots that we have for the six subspecies. Um, number two, kill mech bosses and just eight new mechs. So Wendy has some room for bandwidth. Uh, so she could support some additional mechs, maybe like haulers or combat bots. Uh, we could also decommission older bots and replace them. So some of our older bots that we have here um, could be cycled out for something else. For instance, the pikemen could be cycled out for legionaries or the um, tunneler could finally be retired. Uh, we could also focus on the breeding, breeding program. So that would mean one of sort of two things. One, we could start to consider who in the colony should enter the prison, the hybrid prison, um, because I think it's entirely reasonable that there should be somewhat of a finite amount of colonists now, last stream, we voted that there won't be a hard cap of finite colonists, but we could start phasing out those individuals up here that don't aren't needed to be our fighters, because at this point, Wendy really does not require uh, backup, let's call it. And the other way to focus on the breeding program is just to try to make the best egg crosses that we can, uh, the most informed, perfect matches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we could pillage Ancient Dangers. Uh, we're still looking for an ar Architect Leg for Wendy. Um, of course, you could buy that Architect Leg from Trade Caravans or Orbital Traders. That's always obviously possible. Uh, we could loot Ancient Complexes. There's a whole bunch around the base. See what they have. You know, there's uh, six of them. We could trade with other settlements. Um, the advantage of trading with other settlements, we might have the opportunity to buy... Uh, genes in gene packs that we don't currently have access to, which could be important. And then reassess xenogerms for colonists. So that would be trying to implant the colonists that we currently have with better implantations so that they're stronger or whatever. And then last but not least, viewer suggestions. Something that you guys propose in channel points. So. It looks like you guys want me to focus on the breeding program. All right. First question I have for you is, should I phase out any colonists? Yes or no. So what I mean by that is phasing out means either imprisoning, sacrificing, enslaving, basically making them non-colonists. Um, and I'm only asking that because, you know, we've, we've got, uh, well, let's not count Wendy. We've got 14 colonists and I don't know if they're doing 14 colonists worth of work. Dom, you got too smart. Industrious and too smart. I think I'm going to like you. And Phantom, you got misandrist. So you're a greedy misandrist. I think I'm not going to like you. And then if you want me to focus on the breeding program, uh, the other thing is to try to use Shell Bell's genetics uh, wisely. But we can also start to uh, continue to try to cross Terminate with good mixes. So Terminate with... Um, let's say pigskin or Neanderthal could yield something useful. If you consider, uh, quickly consider the genes here. From the Neanderthal, from a basic Neanderthal, we're looking for one, two, three, four genes. So a, a straight up Neanderthal is four elevenths Wendigo, as far as Wendy's concerned. Obviously it has like slow runner and slow study. So it has some things that, you know, Wendy wants to avoid, but Neanderthal is naturally the closest to Wendigo that exist. Uh, wasters only have the one. So Wasters here is a super immune. That's all she cares for. So that's a 1 11th. 
Impids are only 111th with mini horns. Um, Edekin are only 111th. Well, actually, no, that's not true. Edekin are 311ths because they have robust first skin and strong melee damage. And then um, Dirt Moles have Dark Vision, Fast Wound Healing, Strong Melee Damage. So they're 311s. And then Pigskins have uh, Strong Stomach, Robust Digestion, and Reduced Pain. So that's 311s. So in terms of like the value that these subspecies have towards the Wendigo Project, Impids and Wasters are less useful. Uh, Neanderthals are the most useful. And then Edekin, Pigskin, and Dirt Moles are equal. Um, I mention this because... When we're trying to cross like dirt moles with, um, with other species, it's going to be most important to cross it with. Actually, let's cross it with hybrids first. So the hybrids out here also have filter genes, so they're pretty good at cross with. So like for instance, a triminate uh, stickiest combo or triminate val combo could be really powerful. Now val is just a waster basically, but we'll try it anyway. So the sort of order of operations for genetic bottlenecks like dirt moles is going to be try to cross with the hybrids first because the hybrids typically don't have negative traits. And then if there are no free hybrids, cross with the Neanderthal. And if there are no Neanderthal, then it's a uh, then Edekin. If there's no Edekin, then pigskin, because that would be the order of um, genetic importance. That way I don't have to like think about it all that hard every time. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I already know how this is going to work. So, for instance, this uh, egg has a one, two, three, but that's not enough to bother for me to keep it. But that would be my thought process. Um, so, for instance, if we did get a perfect cross of Dirt Mole, one, two, three, so fast wound healing, dark vision, strong melee damage with uh, Neanderthal. Neanderthal, of course, overlaps with strong melee damage, but they would inherit, a perfect one would inherit robust, reduced pain, and also cold tolerant. So just crossing Dirt Mole with Neanderthal and not having any of the negative genes would give us a 6 11ths right off the bat. More than like a Dirt Mole cross with Waster or Impid, which would only give us a 4 11ths. Uh, super Immunity, Fast Wound Healing, Dark Vision. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, we don't, I don't think I have anyone that has those three traits in the colony yet. Uh, but that means that my eggs are full. So I am going to need to remove one of these eggs that is less than useful. So let's uh, quickly go through them, try to figure out which one is less than useful. So here is a one, two, three. This is a two, oh, you know what, right there. That's just a two. Toss that bad boy out. Come on, Kath. Why are you so slow? Oh, you anesthesia, double peg legs. Yeah, that will do it. Uh, Wendy already like super left the area. All right, and then haul this egg over. Now we do have one open growth vet, so um, we could consider who gets to go in there. But I'm going to wait until that last egg is pulled up. And Guero, thank you for the bits, by the way. I, I think I failed to notice in time. So it looks like we should phase out colonists. Got it. All right, I will write up a poll for that in a minute. Cthulhu, you're a night owl. All right. Put you on a night owl schedule, not that you're going to be out of the vat anytime soon. So these are the 11 that I would consider phasing out. Um, the three Mechanators, I'm gonna leave alone because they're not that easily replaceable. And then there's also Crabs, Guero, and Banish. So there was really like 14 potential uh, that could be phased out. And I will be pulling on that in a minute. Very much like who gets voted off the island. But first, because you voted for me to focus on the breeding program, I am going to try to find an egg to gestate. So we got four. Oh no, don't we have a six? I believe we grabbed a six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. 
One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna grow this one because it's five. Although I think this one's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So this one can't be a colonist because the slow wound healing is slow runner. But it um it makes up for it in the genes we are looking for. So I'm gonna try for it. Uh, anyway. I just wish I had a person nearby to help me with the breeding part. Which crypto is too overrepresented in the offspring? What do you mean by crypto? Cryopod? Probably Guero is fairly overrepresented. As he was the original, um, he was the original dirt mole hybrid. But I, I'll check on that. So what um, measure should we use to phase out a colonist? So there's familial connections, genetic uh, value, or um, personality traits, or other viewer suggestions. So I'll explain these choices here before I set up the timer, so you don't you don't feel rushed to vote. So familial connections would be one that is already very well represented in the genetics, meaning that keeping them around isn't helping to diversify to avoid inbreeding. Basically just overly represented individuals that are already related to a lot of people. So for instance, um, if we take a look at Guero, Guero's got one, two, three, four, five, six children and three grandkids and nephews and nieces, right? So if we did familiar connections, I would just try to figure out who is related to the most people and phase them out. Um, now the method to which we phase them out, it could be, there. there's multiple different ways to phase them out. We can kill them, sacrifice them in some way, you know, etc. Or alternatively, there's the, always the option of just imprisoning them. Because once they're a prisoner, they're not a colonist, they're counted a little bit differently, and we could still extract eggs or um, sperm from them, even while imprisoned, so it's not that big of a deal. So, familiar connections. Genetic value would be those that have the least genes, other than the ones who are currently exempt. So, the least genes would obviously be mass by a landslide, as mass only has robust. But since mass is also a heavily invested uh, mechanator, you know, mass would not be on the cutting block. Those on the cutting block would be, you know, any of these guys, and we would just figure out who has the least inheritable Wendigo genes and just, you know, phase them out. Um, personality traits would be who is has the most amount of breaks. So I could do this one of a number of ways. I could go to the colonists and just go to records for time spent mental breaking or time spent, you know, whatever. So I could do it very mathematically and basically just pick the loser from um, historical records of their performance. Uh, and viewer suggestions would be some other way that you th think of that I have not. Yeah, Mass is very lucky to have been saved because in most circumstances, uh, I would have probably done away with Mass. She is not as useful as uh, I think Wendy would demand. But because she was first, she got the primacy effect going on for her. All right, well, I'll put up the vote now. I don't know who has the most familial connections, uh, so I, it would be a little bit of a struggle to try to figure that out. Uh, Frosty... Where's Frosty? Frosty has actually worked on a chart, a family tree chart, uh, but it's currently, I don't believe, up to date, but the family tree chart would be a good way to try to figure it out. But, um, but yeah, well, I would, I would attempt that. Maybe Numbers has, like, Numbers probably doesn't have family members. 
I don't imagine. Daydora, thank you for the resub. You want your, uh, there it is. Oh my god, look at the Xeno jeans. I don't think that's all that useful there. Nor Xenotype. Oh, and to my dismay, uh, I can't get rid of Xenotype like, like the menu item. Okay, cool. Uh, well, that's a fun bug. And then race is always weird where they think they're all human. I'll just put the Xenotype over there. It's not broken if I ignore it. <laughs> oh, Wendy has almost 700 kills. Was that right? Yeah. No one accused her of being friendly, that's for sure. So we have some shell valve sperm here. Uh, we should use this wisely, as it is rare. So we have an egg of Vendetta. Vendetta, you are just a first skin with strong melee damage. And Shellbell, you have strong melee damage, no first skin. So we'll try that. There's a chance for a 7 elevenths. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then, what other eggs do we got? Got a Dave egg. So Dave, one, two, three. So that would be a chance to... Robotic? No, this is not helpful. In fact, aren't you related? You're not related to Shellbell? Thought you were. Uh, Dave. You've got Fast Wound Healing, Dark Vision, Robust Digestion. And Shellbell, you've got the same. So there's no genetic value in mixing with Dave. What about Krieg? Strong melee damage, mini horns, dark vision. I don't believe there's any va genetic value of mixing with Krieg either. So Krieg and Dave, your eggs should probably be Trimonate's um, insemination. So we'll get that going. So then Shellbell's other, I don't believe I have a target for. Nope. Well, we can always hold on to it. Alright, so Fangface is going for Vendetta Zig. It's very easy to notice, like, missing eggs. And then Wendy got the Dave egg with Triminate. So Wendy, tri uh, Dave Triminate is one, two, three. Not that important to me. Ryza can use Transport Saddle. That's good to know. So Vendetta Shell Bell. One, two, three, four. Um, not, eh. Is that the first fur skin mini horns, though? I think it might be the first fur skin mini horns. Uh, I'll keep it just for that reason alone, because it's novel. I don't know if it's particularly potent, though. And then Krieg Terminate is 1 2. All right. The Terminate, you'll start to... Oh, no, we'll go Shell Bell cross with the Neanderthals. Wait, what egg, what sperm is that? No, no, don't do that one. So if Shell Bell has no other... If there's no other free eggs, I'm going to try for Neanderthal. So here, uh, we have got... One, two, three, four, five... But also with slow study and slow wound healing. Not going to keep it. Okay, we have a toss-up between genetic value and familial connections. Um, I am going to do a bit of tiebreaker, and if it ties again, I will flip a coin. Leave it a chance.
One, two, three. One, two, only. No, three. Mm, not quite. It is the first of spring. It's still negative 40 out, but uh, the hope is that the temperature will start changing soon and allow us to call in some trade caravans. Sarai will get to be thrown into the uh, the scanner pretty soon. And it appears like she has some lungs and kidneys that, um, well, she doesn't need to live, so I'm going to borrow them. So while you guys wrap up that poll, let me try to find the next egg to be voted off this island. So we've got super immunity for skin, strong melee damage. So egg number two is pretty close to being voted off. This is a three or four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. I didn't really, I didn't realize we had a sixer. Dang, I would have uh, adjusted to that. That's a, that's a good combo there. One, two, three, four. I think anything three or under, unless it's like super rare, needs to go. So this is a four. One, two, so three. So we'll toss the Bella Rose Crabs egg out. Sorry, Bella Rose Crabs. But you're not needed anymore. And then this Basque Fiup is a one, two, three. So we'll toss that one out as well. All right, looks like we're going to go with genetic value. So what I will do is come up with, um, I'll go one by one. We'll test people individually in a second here and decide whether we're getting rid of them or not. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, but with a um, weak melee damage. I'll keep it for now. Five. One, two, three. Uh, that's another junker. I think the um, there is some value in keeping the egg storage small, so that I'm forced to pick only the best continually. And that way, I'm not um, storing garbage eggs for any reason. Our current record is still six. We haven't exceeded that with any of the new breeds. But I hope by the end of the stream, I will have a seven or an eight. That would be a lofty, but I think somewhat obtainable goal. An eight would be amazing. A seven would be a reasonable um reasonable goal. Because all I would really need to do for a 7 is to have Shell Bell have an offspring that is better than himself. Which is not that high of a bar. So, for genetic value, uh, let's see. We're going to start with Lillian and work our way over, and I'm going to open up the genes. So, Lillian is a 2. So, uh, Tati, you are a two as well. Rogi, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna leave you off this list because I think we're just voting on the bottom here. Chimic, you're a two. 
The other way we can cross this is think of it as a bit of a matrix where you have genetic value and um, familial connections and to figure out who has the least genetic value and the most familial connections and get rid of them. So right now we're going for twos. Uh, Krieg, you're a three, you pass. Jack, you are a one, two, three, you pass. One, two, three, also, oh, four? Yeah, for, it's frosty, it's a four. Uh, one, two, no, one, two, yeah, two. Vendetta's a two, so Vendetta is a two for genetic value. Dave, you're a three. Buy up, you're a one, two, three. Crabs, you are a one. You're the only, yeah, you're one of very few that have super immunity, but you're just a one. Um, Guero's a three, and Banish is a three. So here is the list of who to retire as a colonist. And you guys can, uh, you can vote someone to be retired. Now, retired doesn't necessarily mean killed. It could mean imprisoned. It could mean organ harvested. It could mean sacrificed. It could mean enslaved or sold as a slave or you know i'll have a bunch of different options for for what we're going to do with the uh the old people can we pick more than one yes after this round uh we can have another cycle it doesn't necessarily mean we're only doing the one the reason i didn't pull like oh how many colonists to get rid of is I felt like we weren't informed enough as to the value of the choices. I think it's important to, and, and Wendy would agree, it's important to analyze the individuals rather than to just make a, a blank statement of like, I'm going to get rid of five because just a generic number isn't meaningful and is not science driven. So we're approaching this with science. Well, says so super immunity? Oh, uh, that's a good question. So I think that most of the current colonists do not have super immunity as a germline gene, but a lot of the ones in the uh, growth tanks do. So I believe crabs was the only one with super immunity currently out of tank, but um, Cthulhu has super immunity in a growth vet. Uh, Phantom has super immunity in a growth vet. So you can see how super immunity is not soon going to be a rare germline. Uh, as does Cameron has super immunity. As does Leb. So we have, what was that, four in the vats that have super immunity? So crabs is currently the only adult with super immunity, but only one of uh, five that uh, that have it. Oh, <laughs> Zaleb, you didn't even know you had a character? Yeah, here, here you are. Female uh, with robust super immune, reduced pain, and cold intolerance. So you're four elevens, one to go. And uh, you're one year old. One of the first things I'm going to want to do is to call on a trade caravan, get rid of some of all this uh, junk that's out on the outside. So I've got a repair probe here. I don't know if I had a recipient for that. It could go to Low, because Low is a mechanator without repair probes, or it could go to Wendy. Wendy has... Actually, I'm going to just have Wendy take it. She's already um, repair probe one. Might as well have her go up to two. Seems reasonable.
All right. Called in the trade caravans. Nice. I kind of wish that um, robots would automatically just recharge if they were idle. That'd be really nice. Like just a dormant recharge. I suppose you could micromanage it, ma micromanage it so that they did. But that would be a lot of work. So I don't bother doing that. I figured I would have uh, Sentinel jealously uh, resupply the Hemogen amps. <laughs> so the first person voted off Ye Island is going to be Krabs. What to do with Krabs? So he's already a Crypto Sleeper, so that's not going to be an option. So it's going to be a Prisoner... Slave or organ donor. There's the options. So prisoner, organ donor, slash sacrificed, or slave. And the both the corpse exchange and the public execution are off cooldown. So there would be a benefit to doing either of those. Or both, you know, do a little organ, forced organ donation and then a bit of sacrifice in no specific order. I'm also going to run a prediction. Will I receive a useful gene from the high mate? Predictions up. So to quickly analyze your genes, uh, I would want weak heatness. Really? Weak heatness? Is that ever a spoonerism? Heat weakness. Um, very attractive, I don't think I have. And a great social. And I believe awful mining or awful plants. Let me see if I have standalone awful plants in mining. So awful plants... I do have standalone, awful mining, I do have standalone, more or less, thin body, I don't, I'm not counting. So, in terms of their genes, I would only really want um, very attractive, great social, and heat weakness. Those would be the, the important ones. I also could see the benefit of psychic bonding. Um, to get that as a gene. But... Um, I don't think I don't think that's going to count as a yes. So, you can do the math if you'd like. Vendetta, what is what is your problem? You're just super pissy. Wow, if you weren't near Wendy, you would have a mental break. You're so reliant upon her to not fall apart. Whereas Wendy uh, has no negative mood modifiers other than supreme expectations, which I literally couldn't remove. She is 100% as happy as she can be. That is fun. All right, so organ donor sacrificed. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, missed the crabs. We'll open up your pod. How many have I gotten from them already? Uh, I believe I've scanned them once. Maybe twice, but I haven't gotten a ton yet. All right. While I kill crabs, you guys can decide whether I retire any other colonists. Ooh, Plasteel is right here. That is convenient. Look at that. I don't even have to leave the base. I mean, if it becomes an infestation, it's super annoying, but sure ain't hard to deal with. So the only problem with retiring crabs is that uh, relatives of crabs gonna have a bit of a, a problem. So cactus, 
and Cameron, Cthulhu, uh, Low, so on and so forth. Yeah. Killing her own. Uh, not that Wendy cares, because she, I can tell you, really doesn't. But killing her own does, in fact, have consequences. I wonder if I'm going to use it in anesthetics because he's in a psychic coma. I mean, I know I will, but I wish I didn't have to. Where was Wendy? What was she up to? I just told her to um, do the operation she ran in from like somewhere far away. Did I cue both kidneys? Yes. Yes, I did. Let me get a lung instead. It'd be funny to, like, accidentally kill him like that. And then, I will do a public execution if anyone doesn't have maximum suppression. Otherwise, I'll do a corpse exchange. So it looks like it's going to be corpse exchange. Lucky you. You'd be swapped out with someone else. So as soon as the sedation is done. We also have a quest of what the heck? Um, so 139 scythers attack. It's two raids of 130. So uh, 278 scythers <laughs> attack over the course of nine days. And I can get like a piano for it. No, no, I'm just not even. It's not that I'm scared of that raid. It's just it doesn't pay well enough. I mean, at that point, it would be relatively easy to just use Berserks. Um, and line up, like, all of my shooters here. And just, like, kite the Scythers past the deep water. But it would take a lot of time, and it's for really terrible pay. So, I'm going to say no. If I had, if Brazit rather had a uh, Neuroquake, oh, he does have Neuroquake. Because I could also Neuroquake them. Um, the only issue with Neuroquake is it will piss off some of the other factions, but like, I could Neuroquake them and have them all fight one another. The only concern I have about Neuroquake is given its radius, Neuroquake is not super viable. Well, no, I guess it would be okay. Neuroquake would work. So if you're looking at the circles, the small circle around Brizit is the circle of everyone safe from Neuroquake. And then the bigger circle is the Neuroquake effect. Um, the worry that I had was that if I Neuroquaked, it would hit the prison. But as long as the big circle wasn't overlapping somewhere important, it would be very possible to just Neuroquake them down. It would put Brizit into a coma for 10 days. Um, but it would be a workable way to deal with um to deal with the scythers with very little effort i just don't know if it's worth it i i suppose i could have you vote on it i just think it's um uh for the for the rewards it kind of sucks Looks like you guys want to retire other colonists. So I will let you vote on whom. So doing a quick analysis of their familiar connections, just so that you can do a more info informed vote. Um, Lilin does not have children. None. Tati does have uh, two daughters. A daughter cousin, uh, but also yeah, two two offspring. Uh, Chimic has 
no direct children. And Vendetta has no direct children. So Lillian would be the, or rather Tati would be the loser when considering familial relation. But uh, Vendetta is often uh, the tortured artist who's pessimist, often the one who's on a mental break. So if we're talking familial connection, you have one answer. If you're talking how annoying it, they are to deal with, uh, it's a different answer. So uh, there is that. Uh, Krabs, are you up and walking? No, you're still tapped out. The anesthesia should wear off any minute now, though. Eggs are kind of flying everywhere. So you have three shell bell sperm. Let me just check on the egg timers for the colonists. Oh, okay. I don't think I missed anyone, but I'm going to double check. They're all like eight days, so I don't think there's going to be any extractions anytime soon. No, they're all at eight days. All right, that's totally fine. Uh, that means the shell bell sperm can go to Neanderthal. And the Terminate will go to... Impid. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld, the first one to go, which originally streamed live on Twitch May 2nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Wendigo. 